So a little over a week ago, I suffered a binge eating experience. The reason why, what should have stopped it but didn't, and how it played out and concluded are things that many may not expect. And so genuinely, I hope this will prove useful and give some context to what is going on in the minds and kitchens of people making decisions that might appear to be odd. And that's useful because when people make odd decisions and others think they know why but are wrong, it doesn't help anybody. Incorrect solutions are offered, and being incorrect, they don't work. Everyone ends up frustrated. For example, obese people are often told, eat less, move more, you big lump, by people who think that they're obese because they've never been told that. It turns out that might not be the reason though, and now you have an obese person frustrated at the low quality advice, and so they eat a donut. And the advice giver, frustrated they aren't listened to. They may or may not eat a donut, I don't know. Now you might be thinking, ah, obesity and binge eating, all the same, isn't it? No, I have been an obese binger and a fine figure of a man binger, so not the same at all. Talking of me, I should say I'm no expert in anything really other than me, so all I do here is describe that. Also, I'm not looking to make light of this topic. This is not a look, I'm eating lots, how fun video. I've made those videos, this is not one of them. That's good. I am hoping to make it moderately entertaining, otherwise nobody would watch, but that does not mean I do not appreciate how serious eating disorders are, clearly. So please do not leap into the comments section saying you don't get how big a deal this is. I do. I have broken enough pieces of furniture by using them as pieces of furniture to understand the severity of the situation. And I've been told I'm lazy, greedy. Do I know how much that chair cost? enough times to know many other people don't get it. People often assume disordered eating is a response to something negative, literally comfort eating to extremes. May well be the case for many, but for me, it is when everything appears great that I become vulnerable. As such, I can pinpoint exactly the catalyst for this round of eating, this video. I posted it up a little while ago to demonstrate how my training was going. Unfortunately, what it also demonstrated to me was how I could probably have a couple of cheat meals and it wouldn't really matter. Look at that quad development. What damage would a few pizzas do? And so, having planted the seeds of temptation with that video, I then watered it copiously by filming a couple of other videos demonstrating how beautiful I looked in slow motion and how powerful I looked on a rowing machine. Before I knew it, I was thinking I could eat what I like. And then my wife, Jenna, went away for a couple of days to spend time with friends, and I was left alone in the house, full of food, three dogs, none of them properly able to articulate the message, no, do not eat that. So if that seems a strange way to transition from being in really quite good shape, physically and mentally, to being ready to commence a 24-hour period of self-destruction, I know, welcome to my world. People that have behavioural issues that do them no favours often find themselves at the mercy of those behavioural issues for reasons that are strange. That is probably highly frustrating for those around them. Trust me, it's no fun for the person either. And remember, suggestions of just use willpower, positive mental attitude is all you need. Those require the brain to make those type of choices. The same brain wanting to make the bad choices. The decision to open the fridge is not made by a third party. My brain, that you want to conjure up some willpower, is currently busy conjuring up ways to mix Ben and Jerry's with extra cookies and chocolate bars because Ben nor Jerry ever put quite enough of that stuff in their ice cream as standard. Simply, if the police are all corrupt, saying tell the police is not a solution. And my brain is going full on training day. All right. So we begin with me waking on the morning of the day in question and being hungry. So I had a Huel shake. Actually, not that bad. Relatively low calorie, low carb, high protein. I normally intermittent fast and have it much later in the day. But I tell myself, really? Intermittent fasting? It's all a bit woo-woo, isn't it? And anyway, look at those legs. So that has justified breakfast at breakfast time. I then occasionally sprinkle a few chocolate chips into my protein shakes because, hey, life's for living. But when I went to the chocolate chips jar, I found it empty. Mildly frustrating, and so it begins because a mild frustration added to the mindset of I could probably eat what I like right now creates a volatile concoction. I begin hunting because I know Jen would have a secret stash of chocolate chips hidden somewhere, and I find them. Of course I do, I'm an expert at that. And so added them to my shake. But not a sprinkle, because by now I had added to mild frustration with some mild annoyance. Annoyance that Jen would think she would need to hide the chocolate chips from me, which she absolutely does need to do. Doesn't matter, still mildly annoyed, our concoction is now overflowing. So is the shake, with chocolate chips. Now at this point, somebody who was an expert in the relevant fields could talk to you about glycemic index of chocolate and insulin response by the body when you eat it. All I can tell you is that shake left me more hungry than I began. 
However, I plan to work out that day. We already know I can get away with a bit of a cheat, so I have no huge concerns at this point. I grab a giant packet of crisp and come to work in the office. Within 20 minutes, I'm back in the kitchen because when I grabbed the crisp, I noticed a packet of party rings, but it's the only thing left in the special treats basket. So once I've eaten them, there's nothing else to have. What harm can it do? I'll just have an extra half hour on the indoor bike later that day, cancel them out. In fact, what I could probably do is not eat anything else all day, and my total calories would probably be about right. I might have consumed them all before 8 a.m., but hey, calories in, calories out, it's all that matters. Party rings consumed. The good news is I am now full up and so can work for at least 45 minutes before I realize I'm not full up at all. I'm aware though that things are going off track. That's the understatement of the year. So I tell myself going into the kitchen to prepare a healthy lunch for later will let me focus on the way I should be eating. I decide I'll prepare some bagels and maybe some avocado. And I don't get any further because I have a sudden compulsion to have those bagels there and then with some chocolate chips. I have a real craving for chocolate chips at this stage. Obviously, chocolate chips don't stick onto a bagel, so peanut butter to provide a tacky surface. Also, healthy fats. Calories in, calories out is now a concept in trouble no matter what I do, but I think, well, maybe I'll have a 24-hour fast the next day. So actually, I might really be in a deficit. That doesn't make sense. That's my thinking. And then I come back to work. I didn't get much done. My body is going into food consumption shock, so I decide to go and have a lie down before lunch now. Let's go back to the reasons why you'd think I'd not be going down this path. And this is relevant because whenever I explain this stuff, people tell me, oh, you should have had this lined up or that in a diary or have this target or goal in the calendar. You'd think that would work, that providing somebody with a compulsive behavior, a good reason to not act on those compulsions, would be a solution. Let me explain what my reasons to not act badly were because they are substantial and therefore show it just doesn't make any difference. Firstly, I had a diary full of YouTube videos to make about me doing a variety of athletic things. I had a sprint duathlon coming up, a 10K race coming up soon, a high rocks competition that I'd spent a huge amount of time and money training for. I had my 50th birthday coming up. Who doesn't want to look good for their 50th birthday? I have a holiday in Egypt real soon. Who doesn't want to look good on the beach? And if none of that was good enough reason to put the cookie down, I have a photo shoot coming up real soon where I am demonstrating the ability for angles and lighting to dramatically impact how good one can look on social media. But trust me, you still need to look half decent. So poor diet choices might now be going to impact my job, my birthday, my holiday, my happiness. And being able to turn that photo shoot into the Mark Lewis 2024 calendar is going right out the window. So there are ample reasons not to if simple common sense was all that was needed to put a lid on things. And I ran through all those reasons in my mind constantly during that day. And at every point, the part of my brain dedicated to satisfying the compulsive behavior would come up with an excuse. And so I wake after my nap having considered all the reasons to eat properly and discounted every single one. Time for lunch. There's nothing really left I can find to eat in the house, so I have a bag of microwave rice. Jen keeps a selection of flavors. I go for the plain whole grain, healthy. You ever see the 350 pound person at McDonald's with three Big Macs and then the Diet Coke and think, what an idiot? Well, whole grain rice, it's my Diet Coke. But I'm not an idiot. This is not an issue of intelligence. There are lots of stupid skinny people after all. I'm not eating all this because I'm confused by food labels or have misunderstood my macronutrient needs. If only it were that simple. And if you're thinking, that rice sounds a bit bland. Don't worry, I put a gigantic amount of mango chutney with it and ate it while wondering what I could go out and purchase for a proper lunch. Now, as luck would have it, I actually had to go out at that point to run a couple of errands, which meant I spent the next couple of hours too busy to eat. As bad luck would have it, that meant I drove back past McDonald's and so had myself a proper lunch with a Diet Coke. That's good. Once home, I spent some time practicing guitar and telling myself that no longer looking like I had in that recent video wouldn't matter because I could become a YouTubing guitar player instead. And who cares what they look like? I just need a wacky little hat. Actually, one of the benefits of practicing guitar is that I can't do it and snack at the same time. Unfortunately, I'm still very new and my fingers hurt after 20 minutes, so snack prevention was not long term. Over the next few hours, I did get plenty more work done in here. I also took a lot of coffee breaks and then finished off the rest of the chocolate chips and found some waffle things in the freezer, so ate those as well. And as I'm doing so, I'm paying attention to the low fat, only X calories nonsense on the packet. I know it's nonsense, but my brain is now desperately hunting for any narrative 
that makes what is going to happen okay. It's why alcoholics and drug users become such prolific liars. They aren't just lying to those close to them, the lies are also for themselves, to create a world where it's okay. Of course I drink because X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z doesn't need to be true, just needs to be believed. And not for that long. Those waffles in the toaster, 90 seconds. I can believe low-fat gibberish on the packet for 90 seconds. And then the evening, and the really bad eating starts. And this is the point where people thinking, yeah, I've had an extra slice of cake when I didn't need to, realize that disordered eating is not an extra slice of cake. It is also, as well as being unlinked to intelligence, demonstrably unrelated to being lazy. It takes a lot of work to eat this much. I'm not lazy. And most importantly, it's not about being greedy. It's not about wanting something, knowing you shouldn't have it, but what the heck, have it anyway. I am very much no longer wanting to eat at this point. I'm not hungry. I want to not eat. But I want Cocoa Pops more. I'd run out of chocolate chips, but I had found these solid lumps of chocolate on the end of a stick thing at the back of one of the cupboards. I think the idea is you put them in hot chocolate and it melts. Anyway, I just chop one of those up and put that on the Cocoa Pops and I'm good to go. Two bowls of Cocoa Pops, two and a half actually. If you're thinking, well, at least you pulled it back to half a bowl to finish. No, I just ran out of Cocoa Pops. At this stage, I do not feel well. I do not want to eat. I want to be back in control. I can't. I go to the local shop, which is open late, and purchase a bag of nuts because healthy fats, and two tribe bars because I ate those on an ultramarathon once, and ultramarathons are good for you, and two marzipan bars because marzipan. And I eat all that, not wanting it, not feeling good, telling myself to just stop, and I eat it. If that makes no sense, I agree. It doesn't. I get it. I can have a glass of wine and stop there. So seeing someone drink themselves to divorce, job loss, hospital makes no sense to me. Except it does because I understand the impossible task of self-control when your brain is going full Denzel. Oh, what a day. <laughs> looking for rationality in the actions of somebody in that situation is like looking for a neat and tidy narrative arc to the story of your own dreams. They are in your head, they are your thoughts, but you aren't in control of how those dreams play. And so eventually I went to bed feeling very sick, woke up the next day, and this is really what sets me apart now from in the past. I was able to completely disregard the day before and launch myself back into normality. Historically, I would have spent the following day very miserable. And in that state, I do find myself in the perhaps more traditional trap of eating to feel better. That's a vicious circle that leads me to crushing furniture. What I have been able to do of late is break that chain of events by simply refusing to be miserable about it. I do not blame myself any more than I would blame myself for a weird dream, which is good because you go to bed on that much marzipan and you have some weird old dreams. So there you go, my trigger for disordered eating, the reasons why you'd think I wouldn't, but did anyway, how it played out and then came to an end and didn't carry on. Will it happen again? Absolutely it will. And there is no need to try and offer me solutions to prevent that. I'm completely at peace with the idea that every now and then it just happens. In fact, not being at peace with it, that would be very bad because that leads to guilt and self-worth issues. And before you know it, an unavoidable day of eating badly becomes what should have been a very avoidable month of it. So in summary, if you are somebody who has your own form of eating issues, I hope you find some peace of mind knowing that others have their own battles to contend with. And if you are someone close to someone like that, well, actually, I don't know. Does knowing that what they do is also done in a similar way by some oddball on YouTube helping? Perhaps not. But most importantly, if you neither suffer yourself nor know someone that does, at least now you may consider that compulsive behaviours you don't understand aren't necessarily down to somebody being lazy, stupid or greedy. And common sense is just not involved. Apart from adding chocolate chips to your protein shakes, that is common sense. Life is for living. 